Hello, good afternoon. You're watching the Easter Monday edition of Midi Live. I am Portia Gabo. Coming up this afternoon. Kumasi Metro Chief Executive suspects arson as Asafu Market is hit by another fire the second time within 24 hours. And on the foreign front, seven suicide bombers are to be held responsible for devastating attacks on churches and luxury hotels in Sri Lanka that killed 290 people. We have details coming up shortly. Do stay with us. And we first begin from the Ashanti region where traders affected by Sunday night fire at the Safu Market have started counting their houses. Some were lucky to salvage parts of their wares. Others, however, looked helpless as they lost all their investments in the far. Our Shanti regional correspondent Ibrahim Abubakar has been to the scene and has come through with this report. After losing their properties in yesterday's inferno, traders here at Asafu Market have started counting their loss. The fire swept through several shops and sheds less than 24 hours after fire gutted the same market. Though they were at the scene on time, it took firefighters three hours to douse the inferno. This was mainly because personnel did not have access to the market to effectively fight the fire. They had to pass their fire tenders outside the market and pull the pump to enable them to bring the flames under control. This morning, affected traders are here to see whether they can salvage some of their staff. Whilst others have managed to save some of their wares, others are also weeping because they've lost all their investments. Let me briefly engage some of the affected traders. Me pama dear, me niya manina shi, mkofoni ya mao mudi abre minina shi. If you meet down, me say say mukama pa say fi if you say baby a wote dear, oya juma dear tisa ufi ni minina shi. Emma, skakro obi di abre me. Last week say me mkofoni ya ma lesbi o abre chip me kufanya kwa yajuma ni minina wa ni minina shi. Into ushia o investment be saina zisi a wolu suni. Ukraine ni yami ni mimi. I'm sorry, I'm not saying I'm not doing anything. Team in check it because you know I'm not doing anything. 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 Because Bibi Biashi. Mimu Nami were any more than that, and your boo boom, but I went away the mammy tempera, Nanny Nasa. She says, See, me uncle Sammy Jaws, say, Jim, go for one and him, dear May. That's any me and Pabua. No mamma, Tom, no ma woman, say, and Pabua. She say, A year, Jumana go hope, be brave, minty minch, no ma, I won't come and call her be brave, we are Jumana, I did because of pride. we have we do use the industrial machines here and all, ma all machines that we use is have been banned. So I'm appealing to the government or KMA boss to come to our aid to give us a machine that we can use to continue our work. This is the third fire in three days. On Friday evening, part of the Kumasi Central Market was gutted by fire. Then on Saturday evening again, portion of the Asafu market was also gutted by fire. Then just last night, another portion of the same Asafu market was also gutted 
by fire. Although fire service has commenced investigation to unravel the cause of the three fires, city authorities are suspecting as in the Kumasi mayor or says entry says effective from today all markets will be closed by 6 p.m. and that a joint police military team will be patrolling the various markets. Ibrahim Abubakar, TV3, Asafu Market. I'll speak to organization, NADMO. And good afternoon and thanks for joining us, Kwabna. Good afternoon. Kwabna, this is the third fire incident in the last three days and the second at Asafu Market. What are your initial findings? Thank you for your viewers and I'll say happy, I mean, happy holiday. Most we'll happy holiday. Yeah, uh, we've been there from yesterday, last night, so today. We are all there when we are told that there were some pockets of fires that are called the fire service to come and have put, that, put it off. So we are, we are still on the assessment. Kwamna, now city authorities are considering arson as a possible cause. Is that the same with Nadmo? Hello, Kwabna. Well, I was early on speaking to Kwabna Sentry, the Ashanti Regional Director of Nadmo. Unfortunately, I lost him over there, but we'll try and get back to him and still at the Asafo market. Well, in a related development, part of the Kumasi Central Market were gutted by far late Friday. About six fire tenders were used to douse the inferno. We recap this report filed by reporter Beatrice Piogabra. This portion of the central market about six years ago. Just after the fire, the traders reconstructed their sheds and shops, despite calls from the Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly for them to stop. Six years down the line, fire has again gutted the place, throwing scores of traders out of business temporarily. The cause of the inferno is not immediately known, but sources say fire personnel had a Herculean task to put out the fire. At the scene on Saturday morning, some of the affected traders were seen scavenging through the debris to service some of their goods. The affected traders deal mostly in second-hand clothing, socks, underwear, and foodstuff. Some of the traders spoke to TV3 News. The traders were also seen busily clearing up the bent clothing to restart their business. Meanwhile, the Kumasi Metropolitan Chief Executive, who visited the site, disclosed work will commence on the second phase of the redeveloped Kumasi Central Market project on May 2nd. He was hopeful a modern market will help reduce such fire outbreaks. Meanwhile, the Kumasi Metro Chief Executive of CCB Entry suspects arson as a safu market by another father time within 24 hours and the fire is the third in the Kumasi metropolis in the last three days. Be very blunt. It is not just an accident that we are we are we are witnessing those fires. It started with the central market which we all thought that it was maybe an, an accident. That is why the fire has happened. Yesterday too a fire took place and today but now looking at the occurrences of it everything is clear that it is an arson 
people are behind it. So from here, I'm going to report to the regional minister, who is the head of the RESEC, that the team must be deployed immediately. That henceforth, we have to send security guards to be monitoring our market day in and day out. And from 6 o'clock going, people should, everybody should leave the market until further notice. I'm sending the warning to all those who have perpetuating this fire. We are not going to tolerate them. We are not going to tolerate them. When we are all planning to develop the kingdom and to develop the city, it has now become clear that we have saboteurs, people who want to sabotage the effort of the government. One thing we also observed was that the fire personnel had a difficult task in accessing the market. All these markets are old markets, which we know there has been a lot of encroachment. That is the reason why the past government and our government have put up the effort of getting Kumasi a modernized market. So there is no need for traders to be putting up structures to block roads. If you block roads, if you block access roads, it means that you are preventing the fire service to move in when there's an eventuality. And we have the Ashanti Regional Director of NADMO back on the line. And Mr. Nsechua, you were giving us your initial submissions on your initial findings. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry about that. You know, uh, yes, last night the fire service, they were having difficulty to get access into the market. So unfortunately, they weren't able to put the fire out. As we went there this morning, there were pockets of fire that was going on out there. And there was a lot of encroachment. So I and my men, my NADMO director, civilian director, civilian submetro director, and the staff, we were able to make access to the place. Mm. So the fire service, they are there, putting some of the fire, the, um, the small, small fires that are in the shops that we couldn't have access yet last night. We are able to keep all, all, all of them off. What assistance is not more given to affected traders? No, uh, no all this will happen after the assessment. So we, are, mm. we hope by the close of tomorrow we may finish with the assessment. Okay. Now, city authorities are considering arson as a possible cause. Is that the same with NADMO? Yeah, looking at it from the layman's view, you may, I mean, I agree with them. But let us finish with the assessment, then we can come back with a tangible solution. All right. Thank you very much. And I've been speaking to Kwabna Centre. He uh, is the Ashanti uh, Regional. You know, uh, you know something? Hello? Go ahead. Yeah. In fact, uh, it has happened to Central Market and it has also happened to uh, Atas Market. Yeah. And we have about three new markets or four new markets in the new municipality, that is uh, Kwame, Tafu, and uh, Adosu, Kwadaso. I'm ending all the MMC and uh, the, I mean, the various municipal chief uh, executives that from hands off or probably from today going, they should employ a private security man mm. to take care of the those new market. Other than that, Something might also happen. All right. Thank you very much, you very much. for your time. And Kwabna Sanctuary is the Shanti Regional Director of NADMO. You're still watching Midday Live from the News Hub. Now, the Managing Director of Cyprin Company Limited and a fire consultant, Prince Edwafel, has blamed the recurrence of market fires in the country on inadequate fire measures at the various markets. And speaking with Eben Ejikum Watson, he added lack of training for market operators is also a factor in incidents of fires. With the recurrence of market fires in the country and three fires in Kumasi in the space of three days, a fire consultant, Prince Edu Afo, noted the need for attention to be paid to the noted the need for attention to be paid to the market and old buildings. 
There are a few things that are happening around the country that actually puts us in a very good position for fighting fire. Um, a few of the high-rise buildings that we've seen in the country are making provision for sprinkler systems, which is very, very key. But a lot of our old buildings, I mean, if you take City House, um, um, and most of the old buildings don't have sprinkler systems. So in the event of fire, we will actually suffer. And um, most of our fire hydrants are also not working, and they are not in good shape. They may have been in place, but then you find that there's no water in them. So yes, there are a few things that needs to be done to put us in a better position when there is fire. The MD of Cyprin Company Limited was worried about lack of access to the market, inadequate fire hydrants in the market, and lack of maintenance of the available hydrants. What is important is to ensure that there's adequate water all the time. And then again, in terms of the source of the water, having proper connection, we do have the hydrants, we do have the lines, it's beautiful. But then I think the challenge we have is to actually get it filled with water all the time. I also don't think that people trying to tap into the lines are a major problem. But the problem is that we need to ensure that there's always water in the hydrants and that they are serviced. He partially blamed the recurrence of market fires on lack of adequate fire measures. The market women and the market men, or the people that actually operate from the market, don't have adequate training and education to be able to handle certain things or handle themselves to prevent fire from starting. You know, the thing that fire service will tell you that do not, do not let the fire start. And if the fire start, make every effort to minimize the spread. But then there's not enough training for people to say, okay, these are the habits that actually start fire within the market and I need to be able to stop them. Because there's no adequate training and there's not adequate measures like fire hydrants and other things. You hear a lot of stories that there's fire in the market and fire service goes there and the tanker runs out of water and then that's it. They have to wait for the next one. But if there are adequate with hydrants within the market it's just easy for fire service to tap into it and then they'll be able to get water and then they'll be able to find the fire prince edu afo had some advice for the general public but what i always advocate is that let's not let the fire start and it is possible if you build your own house, you will do everything possible to prevent the fire from happening. But then the market automatically, yes, they do own the stalls, but then the activities that go on that shouldn't actually go on within the market is what actually starts the fire. So a lot more education needs to go into the people that operate from the market to ensure that fire doesn't start at all. And you see certain mechanisms like smoke detectors, all right, they help. I mean, if you look at this building, there's a smoke detector there. It helps to identify the fire very quickly so that you don't have to have the fire grow to a certain point. If you look at what we call the fire, um, um, the fire chain, all right, when the fire gets to a point where we call it the fully grown fire, it is very difficult to fight. Let's speak to Ibrahim Abubakar. He is a reporter following up on the market fires in the Ashanti region and joins me via phone. And Ibrahim, has the NADMO Director General arrived in Kumasi? Yes, What's the current situation over there? Well, um, for now, the affected traders are still trying to see whether they can lay a finger on something significant. Um, they, uh, most of them have lost uh, everything down to who were lucky have been able to gather something mm. small to go home with. So they are still here. They are shocked. They are counting their losses. Um, it is this morning that I even... Uh, managed to see the extent of the damage. Uh, yesterday I was saying over 100 shots, mm -hmm. but when to see the extent this morning, it's over 200 shops and shops, and even some of the shops have been converted into shops. So the indication I'm also getting is that possibly by tomorrow, even though the fire personnel are here to um, commence investigation mm -hmm. and to unravel the cause of the fire, Possibly by tomorrow, the affected traders will, will start erecting their structures. What is the next step for city authorities in preventing market fires? Well, for now, um, what the KMA is telling us is that um, 
who earlier played the mayor himself is acting. So um, they've had an emergency um, regional security meeting and what they've resolved is that they will be deploying a team of police and military personnel to be patrolling the various uh, markets. Another um, aspect is that they will also start the congestion decongesting some of the market because yesterday um, the reason why the fire even spread because the fire service personnel were there on time it has to do with accessibility to the market all the roads that are um, reserved for vehicles have stores on them so the fire service personnel couldn't go through inside the market they had to rather pass their vehicle outside and be fighting the fire so that is the next step they will be doing reviewing these things and do congestion some of the markets to ensure that any time there is a reoccurrence of fire they will be able to fight it and prevent it from um, extending it to this thing. All right. Thank you very much Ibrahim Abubakar as our Shanti regional correspondent. He's still watching Middle Live from the News Hub. Let's now continue with the rest of our stories. And they sit under excessive heat to provide health care. Patients who report to the facility go through the same trauma. And Evelyn Tenna reports patients and staff of the Medina Polyclinic Kekele go through such harsh conditions in the makeshift containers with zinc roofing sheets. You can call it a container plaza, and you will not be wrong. Apart from the outpatient department, all other departments are container structures. The polyclinic attracts patients from Medina and adjoining communities, including Adenta, Agbogba, and Akshoman. The facility attends to more than 200 patients daily, creating congestion, particularly in the outpatient department, recovery and maternity wards. We are at the OPD section as well as the vital area and this is where patients come in to see the doctor, which is the consulting room that is here. Now, this particular place is very, very hot, I must say. And we have a couple of fans that have been fitted here because of the hot nature of this place. The OPD section is also used as a detention place because these patients here have been detained and they have been asked to sleep on the benches because the beds in the recovery ward are not enough for them. This standing fan is a source of comfort for nurses here, but they always have to sacrifice for patients. Staff often have to improvise for consulting and other administrative work in the open space outside. Another structure for the X-ray department is unoccupied because the polyclinic has no radiographer. The facility lacks a theater, compelling staff to constantly refer patients. Management and staff were tight-lipped for fear of victimization, but some spoke on condition of anonymity. In this small room, we have procurement managers sharing the office with the administrator, HR, uh, typist, um, assistant, health administrator, and then two national personnel, one national. You come to the room, suppliers are sharing the office with us 24 hours. All the documents are here. There is a line on the floor. Look at my procurement register. They are all on the floor here. Look at it. Look at my height. Look at the space I have here. We are now fed up. We have been told that no, we shouldn't send any patient away. So when the patients come, whether there is space or not, and they need to be admitted, we admit them. They lie on benches. We have sometimes we put just mat a mattress on the bench and the patient will lie there. We give infusions hanging on uh, windows. You understand? So all that we want is our building. There is a new build project ongoing, but it has taken too long. It's about seven, eight years now. So all that we are asking those that are concerned about the building is they should complete our building for us. The facility in 2018 recorded 1,300 deliveries, yet the maternity ward lacks space and beds. Normally if it is an emergency, those on the bed, we let them get down and sit 
so that we put the the severe case on the bed. We have such case. Somebody was lying on this particular bed, and they brought a pregnant woman with sudden collapse from the house. So we have to let that one get up so that we put the collapse woman on the bed and start uh, resuscitating that person. And our catchment area to those who came normally don't have enough funds. If it comes to referral, will be stranded. At times, we go around each ward begging for people to give hands a contribution. The nurses, patient relatives, will contribute so that we can pay for the ambulance fee and transfer the person to the recovery and emergency wards have only seven beds. While the heat is a major setback on sunny days, the rains are no better. Work in most departments often have to come to a halt anytime there is a downpour because roofs leak badly. This is the building or the structure that staff of the Medina Polyclinic Kekele are calling for its completion. Now, this structure, we are told, has been left here for several years, yet staff and patients of the clinic go through or stay in that particular heat in there. According to our sources at the La in Kwantanang Municipal Assembly, the project was started by the Gang East Assembly, but it now falls under La in Kwantanang after the carving out of the new municipality. The sources say there are two contractors working on the project, but the assembly does not owe them, indicating the last payment of 200,000 cities was made in December last year. We were told the contractors had asked for pre-financing from the assembly to complete the project, but the assembly said it is guided by the Public Management Act and will not dole out public funds for no work done. Sources assembly had the contractors warning letters to complete the work or risk losing the contract. Evelyn Tinkma, TV3 News, Accra. Coming up as the MTN video report and our citizen journalist Fahad Mohammed calls on government to complete a stalled six-unit classroom block at Amwana Chiasse in the Ashanti region. This uncompleted school building is situated in Amum Achiasse in the Jusu municipality and the building has been there since 2010. And the people of Amuma Chiasa are appealing to the government to come and complete this six unit classroom block for them. This is Fad Mohammed Amum Achiasa in a Josu municipality. Thank you very much, Fahad from Amum Achiasa. You're still watching Midday Live from the News Hub. We have more news coming up shortly. To stay with us. Hello again. In more news this afternoon, lack of space, worn-out equipment and other challenges are affecting delivery of quality health care at the Kintampo Municipal Hospital. The emergency unit of the hospital needs expansion and ultra-modern equipment to administer better health care services. Isibinua Otu was in the facility and has more. The Kintampo Municipal Hospital is a 125-bed capacity facility and attends to all manner of cases. The hospital is the biggest health facility between Techiman and Tamale. Due to its location, it's a first port of call where accident victims are rushed to. And fortunately, the emergency unit of the hospital is not in good shape. Healthcare is delivered under difficult conditions. Due to the daily pressures on the facility, this walkway in front of the trauma ward has been turned into a major ward. Here is Haruna Seidu, a nurse practitioner of the hospital. This afternoon we had a, a trauma and there, was, there were just 10. So 10 on a, I mean a typical day fine, but there are days that we've had up to 40, 50, 60. And all of them have to come in here because this is the critical care. And we only have um, two 
beds and then maybe two benches, you would say. And they are even not in the best of states. The only adjustable bed has broken. You can't readjust it if you need a different position too. So the space is really challenging. Try doing something. Yeah. If you have to um, raise it as you, if there is a weight on it, you, it, it will be tilting to one side at a point in time. So you, you, you cannot adjust the patient um, at one, I mean, when you need the particular. And then as soon as you send it up, it goes down by itself. The situation, he tells me, is even worse when other colleagues have to come in to support in emergency situations. When the hands come in and the space is too small, then you cannot move with the patients. And then you have about 10 patients, just four beds. The rest of the six are on the floor. And then there's blood everywhere. You cannot step on. You are not able to give the appropriate treatment as in giving them infusions and then um, the appropriate movement cannot be made. So that affects care very much. When you have hands, then there's no space. And when you actually don't even have hands, then there's a lot of casualties that you have to deal with. At a time of visit, we saw a lady who was involved in an accident lying on one of the beds at the trauma room waiting to be referred to a different hospital for specialist care but had to wait for an ambulance first for about three hours. Medical superintendent of the hospital, Dr. Gavin Pugh, said the hospital in such cases uses its resources in taking care of patients. Once it's a rescue mission, you have to use the resources and then later hope for reimbursement from either the clients or their relatives. Quite often than not, this does not happen. So resources are used. You use gauze, gloves, etc., on patients. And once they are referred, that is the end of the story. The bill is on the books pen. So we are happy when we get the support of members of the community or others who give us any, um, any, any form of support by way of supplies, etc., that we can use for this um, our work. The acting Kintampo North Municipal Director of Health Services, Alice Velatu, indicated the hospital lacks basic necessities for its smooth operations. Presently, as we are talking, we have three medical offices. And they are inadequate. The number is inadequate. And then we don't have ambulance. So when there are cases, we have to call all over Brunhafo as far as Sampa for them to come down. When they come, they fall in and out alone. It's a headache to the municipal assembly. Then the, the Ghana ambulance service, their ambulance too is weak. She noted our promises to get the challenges addressed has not been fulfilled. Yeah, politicians have come anytime such things happen. They promise and then when they go, we don't get anything, nothing from, no response from them. The hospital as at now is not having even a pickup. The directorate was sharing its pickup with them, and now that one too is down. According to the SDG health price tag, investment in health systems could prevent 97 million premature deaths by 2030, and situations like this should be urgently attended to. AC Benewa O2 TV3, Kintampo. In more news this afternoon, the Ghana Muslim Students Association has held a dialogue aimed at empowering the youth in achieving a fairer, more just and sustainable future. The dialogue was part of the SRC Week celebration of the African University College of Communication. As part of African University College of Communication, AUCC, SRC Week celebration, the Ghana Muslim Students Association organized a dialogue for the youth. Addressing the gathering, a member of the Police Human Resource Department, DSP Alhaji Abdul Jalid, challenged the youth to empower themselves and prepare for the future. Uh, the, the wisdom of people or the wisdom of a believer is scattered. And wherever you see it, you grab it. So wisdom itself is scattered. So you can get the wisdom from somebody who's not a Muslim. 
You can get the wisdom from somebody who's a Muslim. You should not disregard knowledge. Don't say that because he's a Muslim, I just want that some of the people are practicing. No! Seek ye knowledge of wisdom. Imam Muhammad Hussein Bagna also tags the youth to respect and tolerate various religions. Water truly has no color. It is a riverbed that determines the color of the water. So it is with the teachings of religion. God is one. He reflects in Judaism differently, reflects in Christianity differently, and reflects in Islam differently, but he is the same God. So essentially that is what I'm trying to make people understand. It, it, it is no necessary thing fighting over each other, over religion. I think it is time for us to look into our commonalities as persons of faith instead of looking into our differences. The dialogue was under the theme empowering the youth for sustainable knowledge acquisition and interfaith. Anemia and skin disorders dominated ailments at the James Camp prison. Almost all inmates screened on Saturday, April 20 were found with the disease, some of which require urgent referrals. These came to light when a medical team from the Cedar Mountain Chapel of the Assemblies of God at East Ligon provided free medical screening for inmates and officers of the camp. The James Camp prison currently has a total inmate population of over 250 convicts of diverse backgrounds. The inmates are often transferred from Ho, Koforidia, Nsawam, Winneba and other prisons to be prepared for the outside world. Most of the prisoners have come with varying health-related conditions, but unfortunately, they cannot receive adequate medical attention due to lack of medical facility. An infirmary at the facility lacks everything required to provide even first aid treatment for medical personnel to space and drugs. We don't even have a single vehicle here at this facility. And that small intervention between when an incident occurs, how you manage transport and convey the person to a hospital of professional attention is very key. A free medical outreach organized by the Cedar Mountain Chapel of the Assemblies of God, East Legon, on Saturday identified anemia and skin disorders as the most prevalent conditions among the prisoners. The Cedar medical team also identified musculoskeletal pain, hypertension, peptic ulcer, eye disorders and malaria as high among the inmates. A number of the prisoners were diagnosed of complications and referred for treatment at the hospital. The CEDA medical team is to provide funding for the treatment of the referred inmates. An associate pastor at the CEDA Mountain Chapel and an ex-convict, Reverend David G. Messis, urged the inmates to learn lessons from their mistakes. Whatever a man sues, that also shall he reap. I was one time in the world. I did things, a lot of bad things. But when the law finally caught up on me, I realized that man has to be very cautious in this life. Else, where you find yourself one day, you never like it. I spent 19 years in prison for a crime that I committed. And I li lived an exemplary life in prison. And lo and behold, as God will put it, the prison directly took note of me and the government pardoned me from prison. 30 medical personnel, including 11 doctors, provided a 12-hour medical care to the inmates. And Ajina FC carried the day at the third Unia FM Easter football tournament at JKT. And the contest is to spice up and sustain the momentum of the Easter celebrations in the area. For nine teams drawn from JKT, Ajina, Anyase, Akonsumbo, Kutubabi and Taifa took part. And John Hughes has more in this report. Day competition kicked off with Wembley FC from Kutubabi and Super Wonders from Taifa all in Accra. The other teams competing included Faith FC, Peace FC, Jakiti FC, City FC, Ajina FC, Enyasi FC and Akosombo FC. Every side played impressive football and gave their supporters a good reason to stay and cheer them on through the nine matches. After the group stages of the contest, six teams made up of Akosombo FC, Ajina FC, Super Wonders FC, Faith FC and Inyasi FC made it to the quarterfinals. 
at the quarter-final stage, Ajina FC beat Akosumbu by 1-0. Jekiti eliminated Super Wonders on a 5-4 penalty shootout. Faith FC drew with Enyasi FC on a 0-0 scoreline and in a consequential penalty shootout, it was 4-3 in favor of Enyasi. At the semi-final stage, three teams qualified. Ajina was on standby while Jekiti and Enyasi FC faced off in a grueling battle. At the end of full-time play, it was a goalless draw. A penalty shootout that followed was three in favor of Jekiti FC. The final match was between the host town, Jekiti FC, and neighboring art rivals, Ajina FC. The local derby ended with a deadlock after 40 minutes of skillful soccer. The two teams engaged in a decider penalty shootout for honors. Ajina FC beat Jekiti FC by 4-3 to emerge champions of the 2019 Unia FM Jekiti Easter Tournament. Prizes were awarded to deserving teams. An obviously elated captain of the winning side, Ameni, pledged that his team will retain the cup. It's the third trophy that I've win in this year. So, no, yeah. so we are hoping that if we get a little support, we're going to go high. Are you keeping this trophy forever? Yes, indeed, we are keeping it forever because we deserve to keep it. They have the bragging rights now and they've got this plus other goodies uh, from our sponsors to make this worthwhile. Johnny Hughes, Jackie T. In other news, the Chief Ex Executive Officer of the Holy Trinity Spa and Health Farm, Dr. Felix Anya, has emphasized the need to improve Ghana's hospitality industry. He believes the expansion of the sector will be a major boost to growth and development of the country. He was speaking at the launch of a new night life on the Walter River. In addition to its beautiful natural surroundings spreading along the Volta River, Holy Trinity Spa and Health Farm now operates one of the biggest nightclubs in the country. The destination sits about 100 meters offshore on the Volta River, offering residents as well as tourists a whole new nightlife experience. <laughs> Hundreds of revelers were at the venue to be part of the big night. Ghana's Afro pop dance hall and reggae artist Stone Boy, together with Dr. Felix Kweku Anya, Abeku Santana, and a host of others, joined in the celebration. Stone Boy and the Queen of Bim Nation, Ovi's thrilling performance, was the climax of the night. Chief Executive Officer of Holy Trinity Spa and Health Farm, Dr. Felix Kwekwanya, stressed the need to improve Ghana's hospitality industry. If we can look at ourselves and realize that if we don't have a good hospitality system, we have so many negative fallouts, then it is that realization that will push us into realizing that it is in our own interest to improve the quarter of municipality. He entreated government through the tourism ministry to explore medical tourism to rake in more foreign exchange for Ghana. If we can only look at how the structure of medical tourism can operate within the context of hospitality and medical tourism, we would have been able to gain so much foreign exchange that our roads, our sanitation, our salary payments in, in various areas will not be a problem. Radio presenter and tourism ambassador Gilbert Abeku Agri, popularly known as Abeku Santana, lauded the CEO for his immense contribution towards improving the hospitality industry. It's a quality entertainment, a nightclub and a lounge on the river is exceptional. There's none like this on the Volta River. It needs to be commended. That's that's for Midday Live. Thanks so much for watching. I am Portia Gabo. Enjoy the rest of the holiday. Good afternoon.